Donald Trump says there are three things he's going to do on day one if he is reelected. First, close the border. Second, drill baby drill. And third, free those convicted of January 6 crimes, or as he's called them in a post on social media, January 6 hostages being wrongfully imprisoned. He's flirted with releasing some in the past on, in speeches and in interviews, but this is the first time that I can recall at least that he said all of them and that he'd do it on day one. That's more than 500 people, including Daniel DJ Rodriguez, who's serving a 12 and a half year sentence for driving a stun gun, you can see it right here, into the Capitol officer's Michael Fanone's neck, Capitol Police Officer Michael Fanone. Peter Schwartz, who's serving 14 years for throwing a folding chair at officers while wielding a tire knocker. There's that bear spray right there. Retired NYPD officer Thomas Webster serving 10 years for tackling an officer and pulling off his mask, forcing him to choke on pepper spray. Not sure if we're seeing that video, but this, this is more video from the moment. And Patrick McCaughey, who's serving seven years for crushing officer Daniel Hodges with the officer's own shield. You can see that right there. Joining us now is NBC News correspondent Von Hilliard and NBC News justice reporter Ryan Riley. So, Ryan, tell us more. Donald Trump says he wants to, to pardon all of them, get him out of jail. What would that mean? What would that logistically mean for the Justice Department? I mean, this is the largest investigation in, in FBI history. It's a lot of defendants. It's tough to keep them all straight. Um, so this would be a massive undertaking to obviously sort of get rid of all of these charges. And it would include people who brutally assaulted law enforcement on video uh, that day. Just really terrible attacks on law enforcement. Uh, you know, the most recent arrestee we had was someone who fired off a gun at the Capitol on January 6th itself. Uh, that was someone who NBC News identified more than two years ago, but it wasn't clear until recently that they actually fired that weapon. Uh, and they were arrested and picked up on Friday. There's a detention hearing for uh, them on, on Wednesday, tomorrow. And that's a very small segment of these uh, individuals are actually held pre-trial. Um, a lot of them have now been sentenced, but we're talking about a universe of, of 1,300 people who have been charged overall. About 950 have uh, been convicted in some capacity, and about 500 have been served, uh, have been sentenced to time uh, in prison. And, you know, there's a mix of reactions from these defendants once they actually make it into court. Just a couple of weeks ago, uh, I actually talked with Brian Mock, uh, who's a January uh, 6th defendant, uh, and you can take a listen to what he had to say. I think um, if all we've heard is that this is a big lie, let me see what that evidence is. And that's why a lot of us showed up on January 6th was because the courts, um, the courts, quite frankly, had shut this down without letting the public see what evidence was brought forward. And that's what we wanted to have evidence heard. And if people were misled, if people were spoke from a position of authority on information that wasn't correct, they need to be honest about that. Um, and if there is evidence, we need to see that. It's been, you know, we're, we're going, coming up on year four and we're in the exact same spot as we were before. Um, and we need to, we need to be better. So there's really a mix here. We have some individuals who've really seen the light, realized that they were tricked and fooled, that they, you know, that this was all a ridiculous lie about the election uh, in 2020. And then you have people who still believe that lie today. And then you have people sort of in the middle, like Brian Mock, who say that, you know, if this was a lie with that caveat, it was a lie. Um, we should clarify. But if, you know, that he's saying that essentially that if it was a lie, then there needs to be accountability more broadly uh, and uh, for politicians who are spreading that lie. He rightly says it, it's been four years and he hasn't seen evidence. I wonder how much longer he's going to wait um, for that evidence, which doesn't exist. Uh, Von Hilliard, is this a is this something that Donald Trump did on a whim or is it something the campaign wants him to do? Donald Trump has suggested for months now that he would potentially pardon the January 6th defendants. He has called on Joe Biden to release. But he has caveated it. He said he's, not the violent ones. Right. This is a different ballgame here. And Ryan has been on the front lines of reporting the stories of these defendants. And I think it's important to understand how many of them have said that the actions that they took on the day of the Capitol attack were because of Donald Trump. You'll recall during the debate, Donald Trump telling the, the Proud Boys to 
to stand back and stand by, right? Donald Trump, in his eyes, these defendants, a large number of them, they are the most loyal of supporters, right, that were there and showed up that day on behalf of him. Donald Trump and these defendants here, their own innocence is tied together, right? When you look at the numbers, look at the polling data, less than half of independent voters in America think that Donald Trump is legally culpable for any of his actions after the 2020 election or around the January 6th attack. And so for him to go out and make the case that these folks, as he calls them, are hostages, right, have been, have been targeted by the Biden administration, it is all a part of his effort here as we approach the general election to make a stand, one that he cannot avoid at this point because he's already been indicted on charges stemming from the federal election interference efforts. The, at this point in time, he is making the, the decision to stand in solidarity with some of the most loyal supporters, those who literally attacked the Capitol on that day. Um, 